I guess it's been said that the challenge of climate change is the challenge of change. In other words, we can't keep doing things the way that we have been doing. And tonight we're really focusing on the energy aspect of that and looking at low carbon and decentralised energy, energy options. Alan is the Chief Development Officer of Energy and Climate Change at the City of Sydney. Prior to his appointment, Alan was Chief Executive Officer of the London Climate Change Agency, and prior to that, the Woking Borough Council's Director of Thames Wayland. During his time in London, Alan developed the energy and climate change elements of the City's Climate Change Action Plan, as well as developing and implementing some decentralised energy and renewable energy projects across London. I'm sure we're going to hear more about some of the significant achievements Alan made in London and Woking throughout the night, but one of the highlights was taking the borough of Woking completely off the grid with an 80% reduction in carbon emissions. He did that through groundbreaking work on energy efficiency, tri-generation, renewable gases from waste, alternative fuels for transport, renewable energy and fuel cells. Perhaps before we have Alan up, you could join me in welcoming all of our panel members. And, uh, and Alan's been in, in our town for a couple of days and my question is um, what have you observed, um, I guess, in Perth and Western Australia and where you see uh, challenges in terms of the low carbon and decentralised energy in the future? So they can literally remove these regulatory barriers at a stroke of the pen if the politicians decided to do so. You have to remember that the status quo of energy industries are propped up by government regulations, they get backdoor tax breaks and all the rest of it, whereas anybody else is trying to do it in the past. I think the second thing that um, it is about leadership, this has to be led by the local government. There is no other entity in a local government area that owns the property across the, 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 and the streets and, and all that that needs to happen, has control of the local environment plan and the local development plan. A whole raft of things, if you really think about it, the local government is in there. And it's, that's no accident because your infrastructure that you rely on today was developed by municipal authorities back in the 19th century, back in Victorian times. You, know, you had local power stations, you had local electricity, local gas, local water. So you, yeah, all of that examples that people can quote. Uh, you, we need to reinvent the wheel, but this time we need to, need to use much greener technologies. It's not coming from the utility industries, it's not coming from state government, it's not coming from federal government. The only person that's going to come from is from local government. And that needs to be led at the very highest level, it needs to be led by the mayor, it needs to be led by the CEO, and if they're not up to doing it, we'll find someone who can. <laughs> And Alan, um, really great to have you here in the city of Fremantle. And um, maybe to start by saying, the city of Sydney has been really important to us um, as an inspiration and as a real leader in, in the country. The city of Sydney, for those of you who don't know, is the first carbon neutral local, local government in Australia, and the city of Fremantle is the second. So, um, so <laughs> but I mean, to be really absolutely honest, I mean, where the city of Sydney is certainly showing absolute, very impressive leadership in, and is way beyond where we're at. And I guess we're watching very closely as, as to where you're going. That's not to say um, we we've, haven't done a fair bit here, but, and we've certainly just been putting together our low carbon city plan, which is capturing a lot of the ideas that, that Alan's been talking about. And it's really exciting because what is really exciting about it as we're putting it together, and, and Alan can touch on this, is that not only does it make a huge amount of sense in terms of decarbonising the city, but it makes extraordinary economic sense and a lot of these things that we're looking at actually are going to return or have a rate of return around you know, 12, 12 10, 10 to 20 percent is probably the, the common figure but 12 12 percent for many of them and this is a, a different array of renewable technologies and that's better than putting your money in the bank so i mean for, so for us that's really really exciting because then we can actually start to see a really broad large-scale investment in renewables within the city and start thinking really strategically so the technology is there, the local government interest is there. What we need now is to break through on showing how we can do that in the next steps. And that is a series of these regulatory barriers and we've got people working on that sort of thing. So I'm very encouraged. This, this week has been extraordinary talking to people about it. The city of Perth were bowled over yesterday and they're now wanting uh, to, to join in on this, uh, the um, uh, Office of Energy, the Premier and Cabinet were, were there today hearing him. And it's very hard to 
say that this is not the future because it appeals to all sides of politics. This is seriously good economics and you just need to clear the market away to enable it to happen. And that's, you know, that's the other side of the fence agenda and, and yet government also needs to show leadership to make it happen. And uh, when those two come together, you can dramatically change the city. Well, that to me is an extraordinary message that uh, Alan's been able to show in reality. That's great. We, we live in the state, well, a country that has the highest per capita emissions in the planet, and the state has probably got the highest in, in, in Australia. If we can just start to say leadership here in terms of getting our, our carbon footprint down um, as a city, and I guess yeah, the other key fact is that now more than half the planet lives in cities, and we're going to see we're seeing an, increase, an incredible towards by 2030 around 70% of people living in cities. Now we have to make our cities sustainable. That's going to be the future of humanity, and I think this is why this is so important because ultimately it's the infrastructure that's going in now, especially in developing countries. That is going to be the infrastructure for the next 20, 30, 40 years. And we need to make sure that we can prove up these technologies in a place like Perth, in a place like Fremantle, and actually make this happen so that we can actually show some leadership about getting our emissions down and actually set an example for the planet. Then you undermine the basis of all of that stuff. And that's the take-up message. 